Welcome back for another video. My name is Scott. When you're done watching the video here, you can find me on Instagram at Mossboards. So at this point, you've built your boards, you've made your frames, you've done your legs, you've done your finishing of the boards if you wanted to add some designs, and now you're ready for these finishing steps to call it complete. So in this video, we're gonna go over a few things. We'll talk about how to clear coat your boards so they're well protected, and so the bags have a nice slide to them. And then we'll talk about some additional things that I like to do. I like to attach the boards without any latches. We've got these blocks that we'll add in there. So you can squeeze those boards together for better portability and storage. And we'll add some handles, uh, a few other little odds and ends. So post in the comments if you have any uh, opinions on this or if you have any questions at all. So let's get started. So to finish your boards, a few things you'll need for supplies. I like to use a water-based polyurethane from Pro Finisher. It's a Rust-Oleum product that's sold at Home Depot. This is a great product. It's made for wood floors, but it works really well for cornhole boards. Because it's water-based, it'll dry completely clear and the cleanup is minimal. You'll also need a wide foam brush. I like these dense foam brushes that I get at a local hardware store. They don't break down very fast. You can use them for several sets as long as you clean it out thoroughly. Also, it's nice to have a, uh, an aerosol spray-on polyurethane, also water-based. This one from Verithane, also at Home Depot, is great. It goes on nice and smooth. There's no big blotches. And this is a great way to lock in your designs. Okay, so if you have stained or painted your designs, it's good to start off with that aerosol spray, especially if you don't have a lot of time to wait for them to fully, fully cure. This way, that liquid clear coat is not gonna smear your stain or your paint. All right, after you've sprayed that and let it dry a bit, you can go ahead and filter your polyurethane. I always run this through this hairnet style strainer uh, it's nice, you can just wash it off and use it over and over and over. The paper cone filters work too, but those are one-time use and they're garbage in my opinion. So I like this style of strainer. Always strain from your big pail into a smaller pail and never dump the extra back into the big pail. Only try to use as much as you need so there's no contamination, there's no um, debris or dried bits going back into the pail. All right, we're going to use our wide foam brush to apply three or four coats to our boards. Now, some will say you need to sand between each and every single coat. I don't do that. I just let it dry to the touch and then I apply another coat. So we'll apply three or four fairly heavy coats to these boards, letting them dry to the touch between each coat. And then we're gonna let that sit. We need to let this sit for at least a few hours so that it's fully, fully dry. It's not going to be completely smooth. Little wood fibers will come up, you can see here. Uh, you might have some streaking on there from all these heavy coats that we put on. That's fine, just make sure that it is completely dry because we're going to sand this with a fine sandpaper and we need to let this dry for at least a few hours, if not a whole day, come back the next day to sand it because you don't want these layers of polyurethane peeling up. That's a bad situation. So don't ever sand too quickly. All right, sanding can be a scary endeavor <laughs> because it definitely knocks off all the shine from your boards, but this is a critical step in my opinion. You need a nice smooth finish so the bags slide right, and you know it's no fun to play on a board that's way, way too sticky or too slick. So sanding this surface is important. It'll be all dusty and swirly with all these sanding marks. I use an orbital sander with a 320 grit paper. So then take a damp cloth and wipe off all of that dust. And then after wiping off the dust, you're ready for a couple of final coats. After the final coats with a wide foam brush, you should have a nice smooth finish and it'll be glossy if you use glossy. I like to use semi-gloss, it has a nice glow to it and you can't see the streaks nearly as much with a semi-gloss or a satin finish. These boards are a semi-gloss finish.
Okay, let's take a look from start to finish. So you'll start with your bare boards, then you're gonna spray them if you need to. Apply the first few heavy coats, going over and over, letting those dry to the touch between each coat. Now you'll come back with your sander, 320 grit sandpaper, after several hours of letting it dry. Don't forget to sand the inside of the hole and all the edges of your plywood, which are especially rough, from the clear coat peeling it up. Dust off all that. Wipe off all the dust. Come back for your last couple of coats and then let this finish dry before you touch the boards. Once it's fully dry, you should have a nice, smooth finish. If you're producing enough boards to warrant spraying these with the clear coat, then go ahead and do that. I had some bad luck with a, with a sprayer, and I only make a couple sets each month, so I just use the white foam brush. Works out great. examples of the finish that you're looking for. If you see any dull spots on these after they're done, then you can just hit it with a couple more coats. See that clear coat really brings out the wood grain. these last few steps. Okay, so you can see these blocks that I place inside of one of the boards. These blocks are about one inch or so taller than the frame. So these are one by three frames that measure about two and a half inches wide. So these are about three to three and a quarter inch blocks. And then I round those over so they're nice and smooth. Cut four of those blocks and then attach them to the inside of one of the boards. This is also why it's so important that your frames are exactly the same, so you can use this technique to attach those boards together. Nice thing about this technique, there's no extra hardware you need to buy that'll break over time or that's rattling around while you're playing on the boards. Just four solid blocks securely attached to the inside of one of them. Okay, so here you see we're attaching our blocks. So we'll glue and clamp these blocks in place, countersink with the pilot hole, and then attach those with your one and a quarter inch screws. After doing the blocks, you can come back with your handle. When you drill the holes for the handle, it's best, uh, just a bit of advice, to hit that with the uh, either a paddle bit or a Forstner bit to drill those holes. Always drill a pilot hole and then hit it with the paddle or Forstner bit from both sides so you have a lot less tear out. If you're pushing all the way through, especially with a paddle drill bit, it'll really tear apart the inside of your board. So hit it with that bit from both sides. All right, now we've got our handles also attached. We've melted the, on the inside knots of those handles. You can also round over the, the edge on the outside so it's nice and smooth. And these are nearly complete. All right, for the serious cornhole players, it's nice to have something to easily measure the distance between the boards when they're in play. So this is a 27 foot nylon coated cord. And then we just clamp, these are called ferrules. Um, so we just create a loop in the end of the cord poke it through the end, and then loop it around a screw. This is the easiest method that I've found. And that way, it's easy to set up. You're always gonna have exactly 27 feet, and you can just throw that cord into the bag with the rest of your bean bags when you're not using it. All right, here's the end goal. And you're always looking for a nice slide, not too slick, not too sticky. A couple of my buddies here playing on some moss boards. Also, we like to use these tournament style bags that have one slick side and one sticky side, a duck cloth side and a micro suede side. That way you can pick and choose how the bags play on the board. If you can throw a nice flat bag. All right.
right, if you have any questions or comments or opinions, go ahead and add your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow me over at Mossboards on Instagram. Hope you have a great day.